Back on nudist beach. <laughs> don't, you don't need the clothes there, do you? <laughs> Later on, if you want it a bit thicker, because we'll blend all this lot up. So the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Because <laughs> we know blend, that's all. That's not it, behave. Good evening. So tonight, boys and girls, it's a bit of a cooking video. I'm flying solo, glass of red wine. I've got my Kasori pressure cooker. I'm going to cook you a traditional Lancashire pea and ham soup. So first off, we're going to do this ham shank here. We'll cook that on its own. It takes about three minutes. What I'll do is we'll set that off there. With the bare wood as well, we do this. In fact, I believe this. Oh, hang on. See what you do with this? When you take it off, it's a little thing there, look. All right, stick it in. So your lid stays there, you don't have to look for a table, keep forgetting that. So that's about a cup of water. I don't measure much, to be honest with you. We'll stick a cup of water in there. We'll throw this lovely ham shank in as it is. Just place that in there. So once we've got the ham shank in there, take the lid off, line up the little red dots that we've got here. Here you go, diddle diddle diddle. Turn it, that's locked. So with the ham now in the pressure cooker, what we'll do, we'll simply select pressure cook. It's already set to three minutes, but if it wasn't, all you do with these here, you toggle it up or toggle it down, that's set for three minutes. And then we'll simply press, it's on high, which is what we want. And now we'll simply press start. It'll run through its preheating cycle. Once it's done that, it'll then cook it for three minutes and then turn itself off and we'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Voila! So that's the dried piece soaked in bicarbonate soda overnight and rinsed off. There's the ham meat stripped off the bone. There's the celery and potatoes, all peeled and chopped and the onions and the carrots sliced and diced. So we're going to select the saute. We're going to set the temperature. So we've got low, high or custom. We're just going to leave it at that. And then we'll press start. That'll bring it up to temperature. And once we're at temperature, we'll start adding the ingredients. Right, can hear it sizzling away now, so we'll just add the ingredients. Here we go. We've got the onions. It gets really hot this when you're sauteing it, which is absolutely fantastic. There you go, there's your onions. Give them a quick stir, get them coated in the butter. Smells wonderful. Throw in the carrots. It's a great dish to make this. Proper winter warmer. Let's get them in. Going all in. You just want to sweat these off for a couple of minutes, that's all. Well, that's had a couple of minutes now, so now we can add in the potatoes. The potatoes really are just for thickening it. It's only a couple. Came out of the garden then. And some celery. With regards to seasoning on this one, what we'll tend to do is just put pepper on it. Um, because you get the meat itself, the ham itself, is quite salty. But we'll do all that right at the end. So now we'll add the peas. Keep some of your peas back. Add about a litre of the vegetable stock I use. That's enough, that. About a litre of vegetable stock. Again, give it a stir. It doesn't matter what order you put these in, really, because it's all going to get blended up. Bring that back to the boil. And again, at this point, you can add, add, add in about... I mean, there's a lot of meat there, if I'm honest with you. There's enough for two batches here. So add in your meat. Keep some back again later on if you want it a bit thicker because we'll blend all this lot up first all this is going to get blended into a nice big pea green soup 
But if you like the lumps and bumps in it like we do, we add a little bit in at the end. So let's just get this back up to temperature and we'll get back to you. Right, so what we'll do now, we'll just put the pressure cooker lid on. So we'll just stop this now and cancel that off. So we'll now replace the pressure cooker lid, lining up the little orange dots as usual. Turn that on and we'll set this now to pressure cook. It's set for three minutes, so we'll send that up to four, five, six. We're going to go for seven minutes, okay, and we'll press start. This will now run through its cycle again, get itself up to pressure, and we'll get back to you when all that magic's been done inside there. And we'll show you the next step. Right, so, pressure cooking's finished. It's come off seal, it's gone to vent, so it's all pressure. Once this little silver button here has popped down, then you say to take it off. Just be careful, because when, when you take it off, you're still going to get some steam. So just crack it open like that. Lean it back. Ooh, look at that lot there. And I'll, I do like this part, I must admit. I'll try and do it this way, where you just look it in the back there. <laughs> it says, can't find the hole again. I don't know if I've got three kids. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> Oops, he says. Oh, there we go. So you're not looking for somewhere to put it on your surface. Doing it a bit cack handed here while I'm filming for you, I do apologise. So what we'll do now is we'll take this out, we'll transfer it into a bowl, because we're not going to blend it in this, I don't want to damage this inner pot. Transfer it to a bowl, blend it up for you, and then we'll show you the next stage. I'll just give you a close up of these peas. So we've now transferred it into a bigger pot, one that I can blend in. It's an old one, so it doesn't matter. Doesn't that look lovely? Right, that's it now. It's uh, blended up into a puree. Uh, we're going to transfer this back now into this pot, put it on saute, and add a few more little ingredients. And that'll be the end of it. Rock and roll, traditional p and soup, the Lancashire way. Right, so we've transferred the soup itself back into the pressure cooker pot. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add some more peas, just to give it a little bit of texture. That's where we like it. You don't have to do that. It's purely up to you. So we'll just add a few more peas in. That should be in fact we'll put all that bowl in, we can't be mathing with it now. We'll put a little bit more meat in. For that chunkiness. This is a big portion, this by the way. We'll freeze some of this. The dog can have that bit that's just escaped later. I'm going to add some mint. Give all that stir. And now we'll give it a taste test. It's only going to need a little bit of salt, and I mean a pinch of salt. But it will need a little bit more pepper. I like to use crushed black pepper. I've done myself, and your pestle and mortar. There we go, stir that in. Give that another taste. Oh wow, yeah. That's the dog's nuts. It's on saute for about five, 10 minutes once it comes up to temperature. And we'll just keep it warm and serve it as is. Right, so the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Look at that, eh? So we'll have a little try now, without any salt and pepper in, see what it looks like. You can see, oh look, so we've got a bit of meat there, some whole peas, you can see the pepper on top. Before we try it. Oh yeah. Hello? Doing it again. Absolutely beautiful. Love a little winter warmer for you. I'm just getting to that time of year now, aren't we? When we need this type of stuff. It's, uh, that's really nice. 
That's actually it. Garbage. There's enough salt in it for me, but there's not enough pepper. I would like to add me um, my seasoning during the cooking, but not too much. Because everyone has different tastes. Some people like more salt, more pepper, etc. So I always tend to add mine at the end. I put, do put some in, but not a lot. That's perfect for me, though. I know. But I like a lot of pepper in mine, and other people don't, you see. Isn't that, isn't it? Gorgeous. Ham's gorgeous. Yeah. So how much was the ham shank? It's £3 off. Well, £3 off for an ham shank. Some butchers. It was about 90 pence for the uh, dried peas. Um, and the potatoes we got out of the garden. The uh, onions we got out of the garden. Yeah. We didn't with the carrots, in fairness. We got the... Um, we yeah, we haven't grown them. It was them whoopsie. We got a whoopsie bag of carrots. <laughs> uh, what else was in it? And the celery. Oh, you had to buy the celery. That was the only thing you had to buy, really, wasn't it? Yeah, and celery's on cheap as well. About 60 odd pence. So 60 odd pence. 60 odd pence for the whoopsie bag of carrots. Yeah. So all told, and this, right, this is a big bowl, as you can see. We've got half a pan left, more than half a pan. So we'll have this tomorrow during the week. Some of the kids will have it as well. They're going to all pop round for it tomorrow because they all love it. My daughter and me uh, and, and her partner, uh, they're coming round tomorrow. They want some. <laughs> as you can see, I do make it this time of year and everybody loves it. It's, like, yeah. it's an absolute blinding recipe. So if you want to try it, give it a go. It is dead easy. All I will say is with the cassoura, be careful when you have it on the saute at the end. I had it on the high to start with. Oh, I'll be honest with you. It was like Mount Vesuvius going off here, pshoom, pshoom, pshoom. So I turned it down to the low setting. And it is, it does go down pretty quick. But I did manage, when I was stirring it, to somehow get it to pop up and it landed on the back of my hand. So I burnt a couple of my fingers, but get them under cold water and you're all right. Straight away, and keep it on there till it stops sticking. Mm. But, like you say, yeah. if, you, if you just leave it, about five minutes, no, not even that, a few minutes. Just for it to cool down a bit and then stir it. So, we're getting ready for our upcoming holiday, aren't we? Yeah. So. Oh, absolutely can't wait. For trying one. to lose some weight, but I'll tell you what, giving out all these pub reviews for you lot and chippy reviews, it isn't helping my waistline. No. I'm telling you, so I'm enjoying it like, but I'm not, my waistline isn't. Well, I'm fairly confident my doctor isn't. Oh, and if you think this is water, you're very much mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> Coloured water. <laughs> Coloured with pink gin. When we're away for a month in uh, Tenerife, coming up very soon, uh, have you bought any clothes for it yet? Are you back on a new, few things. Back on new this beach. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you don't need any clothes there, do you? <laughs> <laughs> have, you bought, have, you bought, have you bought some decent gear or what or not? Yeah, I bought some new tops. Um, I'm alright with skirts because I'm gonna have my nice life of skirts which you know it, it's about weight and everything you carry in your case and they don't crease either. We only take two small cases. We're going for a month and we're taking two of them small cases you bought above you. New trainers. New trainers. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah well, we've, we've got, got new trainers. We've got some for you there. We'll show you these yeah. new trainers when we get them. That that'll be a video on that, you'll enjoy them. <laughs> but yeah, trainers, a uh, bit a bit of bit of bling, a bit of jewelry. Um, the usual suspects, you know, a few bits and pieces, you know, can't go into too many details, you know, I, you know what I mean, girls. Piece of meat, I think, I think what we'll do, we'll do, um, as a bit of an introduction to Spain, we'll do, uh, I, might go to, I might take you for a tapas lunch or something like that, yeah. tapas meal. Oh, well, we could do that, we could also have a tapas evening here. No. Answer <laughs> <laughs> to that, no. I'll take you out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing is, I think that uh, all the kids have been down here joining in, I think. And the dog. And Donald. Right. I need to finish. I've, nearly, I've finished half a bowl already. It's addictive, this stuff. I have to say that. I'm going to score my own food out of ten. Not a chance. <laughs> um, but it is very nice. Very cheap, very affordable. It warms the cockles of my heart at this time of year. Um, and you can feed the family with it. Oh yeah, definitely can, yeah. We yeah. got this from our local um, butchers, Hortons. Yeah. Got to give them a plug, absolutely brilliant with us. We get all our meat from there now. Don't go to a supermarket no. anymore, we've had the enough meat, of them. The standard of meat is totally on another scale. 
We pay a little bit more, but I'll be honest with you, it seems to go a lot further. Yeah. And it lasts longer in your belly. <laughs> well. I don't know whether it does or it doesn't. <laughs> Maybe it's in there. Anyhow, right, have you enjoyed that? This is absolutely brilliant. I'm doing well to stop stop eating. I know what I'm like when I'm in food, you know. I mean, I'd give it 10 out of 10, only for not having the butter in the bar, but because it's my fault, I'll have to give it 10 out of 10. <laughs> Six for me. Anyhow, because <laughs> we know bread, that's all. <laughs> right, anyhow, I hope you, we really do hope you enjoyed this. There's a bit of cooking for you. I've got to re edit, the, go and edit all this now, and I've no idea how to edit a cooking video. I'll give it a go. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe, it is free. Ding the notification bell because we love it when they do that, don't we? Certainly do. And don't forget to comment and have a chat with us because we love that. We do. So don't forget, comments down below. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Give it a kiss. <laughs> <Mwah>. <laughs> see ya. Talking <laughs> peeps.